Webheads, you want to win a Marvel Masterworks featuring the Avengers hardcover? Well, all you got to do is stay tuned to the end of this video and find out the details and how to win. And oh yeah, don't forget about Top 10 Most Anticipated. Hey all my webheads out there, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0 and fans, I am your host, Mike Spider Slayer, always helping you make decisions on what comic books to buy and today guys, I'm bringing you my top 10 most anticipated comic books for 12, 23, 20, that's right guys, it's never too early to start that pull list for next week and guys, let me just say, we're coming towards the end of the year, there's some good books but then there's not so great books but when we get to January, when we hit DC, when it comes to Future State, I'm very curious to see if you guys are excited about all those books that are getting ready to come out. So, guys, at any time, if you want to become a member of Comic Book Corner 2.0, all you got to do is go onto my home screen, hit that join button, and again, it helps support the channel. And guys, thank you so much for taking the time watching and commenting and supporting Comic Book Corner 2.0. So, Let's get started, guys. Let's kick it off this week with The Hot Seat. This is always the book where if I'm picking it up again, I could just drop it or I just might not pick it up, but I, it's on my radar. So this week's Hot Seat goes to Excalibur issue 16. This is coming off the heels of Ten of Swords. So that's why I'm picking up all these X books once again. Now I can honestly tell you I read Sword issue 1 this past week and I was not a fan. I don't know if I'm going to be going forward with that book. So just like that, I could drop it. There's just so many of these X titles. They're not all needed, right? And I dropped Excalibur at one point too. And I'm trying to this once again. And it says verse 16. And it says the sword is sheath. The team is left changed in an aftermath of tennis swords. And some things lost cannot be replaced. So are they talking about Betsy in this series, right? I mean, that's obviously the case here. And uh, I, I don't know what else this book is going to offer going forward. So it, it, I just, I'm clueless when it comes to it. I'm going to give it a try. And if I don't like it, then I will just not read it anymore, just like I did before. That's all I can say. It's 28 pages, $4. That's the book that's on the hot seat this week. All right, next, coming in at number 10 is Detective Comics, issue 1033. It's been a solid series. Peter J. Tomasi is on the book. Unfortunately, he's not going to be on the book anymore, and uh, it's, it's a shame, but we're getting to see this guy who's running for mayor, and he has his own agenda when it when he gets when he becomes mayor here, and uh, that looks to be an interesting story. And it kind of sounds like Detective Comics is maybe playing into what's happening with Future State. I could be mistaken there, uh, but that's the vibe that I'm getting from it. So we'll see what happens. Great story. Again, I'm just disappointed that Tomasi will no longer be on this book. So this book is 32 pages and it's $4 as well. Coming in at number nine, we have the Department of Truth. This is issue four. This is chapter four, and uh, this book is written by James Tiny in the fourth, and it's an interesting story that has to deal with conspiracy theories. The last issue had to deal with a, a gun situation where uh, a mother's son wound up getting shot, and you're not sure if it really happened or if it really didn't. And it's kind of, you're kind of led to believe, like, if people believe in the certain things that these situations might come true. It's a very weird story, and I think it does take an acquired taste to like this book. Uh, I've enjoyed it so far. I'm just not sure if they're just going to be kind of doing individual routes or if it's going to lead into something deeper going forward. Uh, our main character is Cole and uh, he's had something traumatic happen to him in the past and it looks like we might be revisiting that in the future. So 
We'll see what happens with it. Um, very interesting, weird story. Artwork is very like painted style, gives it like this hazy look to make you feel like, hey, is this actually really happening? It kind of has that effect on you. So yeah, Department of Truth issue four, 32 pages, $4. All right, guys. So next, coming in at number eight, we have The Amazing Spider-Man. Issue 54 LR. I think we're getting close to the end of this whole Kindred situation. The last issue of Spider-Man, issue 54, had to deal with Kindred and Spider-Man doing this crazy battle where you get to see Spider-Man get killed over and over and resurrected over and over. And he always had this visualization of his friends being hurt. And it was, it was very brutal issue, right? And we all know at this point that Harry is kindred, and uh, and now we get to see kind of more of the effects of what's going on with his friends, okay? And I guess we're going to see that happen here in this issue, and then also there's going to be something going on with Mary Jane, because at the end of the last issue, uh, we just saw Mary Jane's portrait there and it looks like she is again going to be a major player towards the end of this series what's the end game here when it comes to spider-man what's going to happen to kindred harry whatever and you want to you don't want to know what i really want to know is like how did harry become kindred like how did he get to the point of where he's at right now that's the story i kind of want to know so there you have it, Amazing Spider-Man, issue 54, LR, getting close to the wrap-up of the main story of this, 28 pages and $4. All right, moving on to number seven. This is Batman, the White Knight, Harley Quinn, issue three. Yes, guys, this is book three, and this has to deal with uh, Harley working for the GTO as she's trying to solve this case where you have someone committing all these murders and is, is painting them like black and white and whatnot. Last issue was kind of cool because we got to see the, the history with her relationship and Jack Napier, how when she was a doctor, she was trying to uh, publish stuff about his illness and hopefully uh, find a cure where Jack took it the wrong way and uh, was like embarrassing him, like um, saying that, oh, you're calling me sick, you're calling me a sicko. And, she, you know, it was a really interesting tale about that. I really enjoyed it. And um, I love this story about Harley. So I'm looking forward to more. And this one is 32 pages and this one is $5. All right, guys. So next, coming in at number six, this is from Image Comics. This is The Scumbag. This is issue three, written by uh, Rick Remender. This is an interesting tale about a loser, a druggie, the biggest scumbag on earth who's got this mission to basically save the world at this point, or at least New York. And, uh, you know, he's going against this group called, I think they're like the Scorpions or Scorpinox or whatever they are. And uh, they're, it looks like they're going to blow up the building or blow up the city and uh and this is a good book because you have this loser that's working with this elite soldier and he's making these demands like going to see like a judas priest concert and getting all the drugs in the world and you know, and things are happening in his favor just by chance. And uh, it, it makes for a funny tale. My only issue when it comes to this particular book, right, is that when does it get old that he's this loser, this druggie, um, these, these little sayings that he says or these jokes, you know, and then this agent is covering for him or whatnot, or he does these things by accident. Like, when does that get old? And uh, for me, that's kind of like, it hits in the same world realm of like Gwenpool or Deadpool when you have these jokey comics and things like that. So, I don't know if it's going to continue to go that route or does he clean up his act and become this super soldier eventually? That's kind of where I want to see it. I want to see him evolve from this loser to this elite soldier. I think that would be an awesome journey to see with this character. Hopefully it goes there. You guys let me know in the comments below what you want to see out of Scumbag. Looking forward to it. That's my number six. All right, so moving on to number five. We have a King in Black tie-in this week, and we have um, Spider-Woman issue seven. So this one looks kind of cool. As the cover on here, you have Jessica Drew. She's on a cover of the uh, one of the symbiotic dragons. So this one is pretty cool. I'll give you the description here. Abandoned by her friends, there's only one person who comes to Jess' aid, and that's 
Octavia Vermis. She's got a cure for Jessica, and the prescription is crime under the cover of Noel's invasion. Spider Woman is stealing elements of a cure to her condition, or is she? So this tie-in has to do with, I guess, mainly her main story as she's trying to figure out a cure, in it, a cure for her illness, and it all has to do with this King in Black tie-in. Hopefully, this book does tie in more to King in Black than some of the other tie-ins at this point in time. So far, we've had a few of them, and they've been a big disappointment, especially when it comes to uh, the Namor issue and when it comes to Atlantis attacks. Um, you know, there's just been nothing really there. The only one that's had some kind of remote tie-in so far is the Union issue one. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed for this one because I am covering all these tie-ins for you guys. So stay tuned to those videos when it comes to King and Black. This book is 28 pages, and it's $4. All right, Webhead, so moving on now to number four. This week's number four, most anticipated, goes to The Family Tree, issue 10, written by Jeff Lemire. This has been a, a phenomenal book about a girl by the name of Pe uh, Me Peg, Meg, who actually has turned into a tree. And, and and she is the first one of her kind to root herself. And basically, it becomes this pandemic where everyone becomes trees, right? And it's really interesting. But yet, her brothers live, her mother lives, and I think her grandmother lives. I don't even remember if that was the case. And they're still the ones left standing. So this takes place post-apocalyptic. They're the survivors of this world. Such a great book. I love this book. Uh, it's one of my favorites of the year when it comes to indies. Definitely, guys, check it out if you haven't. It's coming to a wrap. I think it ends, I don't know if it ends at this issue, next issue, or issue 12, somewhere around there. Great, great book. Check it out. All right, next, coming in at number three. Another great independent this year, Something is Killing the Children, issue number 13, also written by James Tynion IV. And um, I think this book is getting ready to come to a close, too. The way the description sounds here, I have no idea when it's ending, but it says, The monsters in Archer Park have surrounded the school where Erica and Tommy make their last stand. Even if the House of Slaughter can save them, will the price on their help Boy, the price of their help be too high. Sorry. Um, so the way that description sounds, it sounds like it's coming to an end. And what I'm reading, I'm like, well, how long can this go on? You know, you have Erica Slaughter who's doing these these battles against these monsters. She has Tommy by her side and and they're trying to stop these creatures from destroying the entire town. They've killed so many children already. We get to see um, we get to see the, the people making their way as well, like the house of slaughter, making their way, way to the town to try to stop her there. It, it looks like it's coming to a climax and it's coming to an end. I want to know if you guys know, uh, if this series is ending or not. So let me know in the comments below 32 pages, $4 webheads. All right, next coming in at number two. We have Maestro, issue five. This is the final notes, a symphony years in the making. Uh, from Future Imperfect, this miniseries has been awesome. Seeing the journey from Hulk to becoming Maestro has been phenomenal. The last issue was so good as you get to see a battle between the Hulk and the current Maestro, who is Hercules, and to see that battle, how that ended, how Hulk prevailed, was outstanding and I can't wait to see how he captures the throne in this particular issue and we're getting a follow-up miniseries after this how Maestro takes over the entire world so I can't wait to see what happens there this book has been so good great artwork 28 pages four dollars and last but not least, of course my most anticipated my number one book four next week 12 23 20 goes to king in black guys this is issue number two um webheads i loved king in black issue one i thought it was phenomenal so good um it was like a cinematic movie the arrival of the null his confidence, the way he took on Sentry, the way he battled the Avengers, the way Eddie Brock was thrown off the building. There was so much just 
just winning of the villain. And and sometimes that's what you like to see. You want to see how badass that villain actually is and how he can conquer those bad guys. Now, the story really truly begins, right? We get to see the arrival. Where does the story go from here, uh, right? And uh, what's Noel's objective besides conquering the Earth? Who's going to die? How are the Avengers and, and Venom and everybody else going to prevail? How are they going to overcome this huge threat? That's what I'm looking forward to. Can't wait for it. Number one delivered. Let's hope number two delivers. Let's hope the whole series develops, guys. And um, I can't wait to see what happens. So 44 pages, $5. Noel has arrived. And there you have it, guys. There are my top 10 most anticipated comic books for next week. All right, Webhead. So if you want to win this Marvel Masterworks hardcover featuring the Avengers, which covers issues 189 through 202, a $75 value, guys, all you got to go to is my top 10 comic book covers of the year. It's my final nominee video. I will leave it at the end of this video for you to click on. All you got to do is make sure you hit that sub button, hit that bell, hit that like, and most importantly, you got to vote on that video to make sure you enter to win this. And then next week, next Tuesday, I will have the results show. Well, I will announce the winner for this awesome prize. So good luck to you all. Guys, I really want to know in the comments below, what are your most anticipated comics for next week? And guys, if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the bell. And until next time, Webheads, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll leave you more content right here. Take care, everyone. Bye.